This is the New American Media. All right, we are back with Rob Troutman. Make sure you check him out. Sports on Tap. Follow it on Twitter at SOT Podcast and follow him. He's at R Trouty. That's R T R A U T Y. Listen, Rob, the Cleveland Browns are on a three game winning streak after trading away Trent Richardson two games into the season with the new head coach. Uh, <laughs> what the hell's happening? <laughs> how, how, how did we get to this point? Talk about the streak. What in the world happened? Is it just that the players are now all afraid of their jobs and they've stepped up their game, or was he a, a, a cancer behind the scenes? Because it, it really, it seems like there was more to this trade with Trent Richardson that, than meets the eye. Um, I mean, to what do you attribute the, the the three game winning streak to in general? And then let's get into yesterday's game against the Bills. You know, it could have been a whole host of things. I mean, Trent Richardson, I'm I'm not necessarily sure everyone loved him in the locker room, but he definitely he wasn't a bad guy. Um, let's be honest. He he was a you know, he got hurt a lot with his team, hasn't contributed all that much. Um and, and maybe some of the players felt like that was a wake up call, like, Oh man, no jobs are safe around here but um I think, you know, the coaching staff is building a pretty good uh, plan around this team. You know, obviously Joe Banner and Michael Lombardi know something about the game of football because, uh, you know, bringing in a quarterback like Brian Hoyer in uh, was a surprise. And, and in this town, you know, in Cleveland, a lot of fans were thinking the Browns were going to tank the season and go for a high draft pick and draft a quarterback, which, in my opinion, I'm not sure the Browns are necessarily sold on some of the quarterbacks in the draft. So, well, what, what, um, let, let, me, let me pause you right there. For what reason do you think the Browns are not sold on the quarterbacks in the draft? Well, well, I think the way they're coming out right now. I mean, you know, yeah, it's easy to to sit there and say, you know, I don't think any team's going to tank a season. But just from hey, the, um, and, oh no, hold around, on, the, the Indianapolis Colts certainly did when they traded Peyton Manning. They knew what they needed to do. They knew. They kind of tanked. They sucked for luck. That was a little catchphrase <laughs> with them, but I digress. Well, and, you know, when you look at Andrew Luck or RG3, I think they're almost in a class of their own. I mean, you can, everybody's going to compare those two to uh, draft classes after them, you know, before them and what have it. And, it. and right now, I mean, yeah, you look at Teddy Bridgewater, you look at Taj Boyd, and, and some of those kind of quarterbacks, and I'm sure they probably have their favorite. Johnny Manziel's out there. You know, that was the talk. You know, probably a week after uh, they traded Trent Richardson was, is Johnny Manziel going to be coming to Cleveland? And you know what? I just think the Browns right now um, are in a state. They want to prove to the fans and gain the fans' trust first. Um, You know, I don't know how many times Joe Banner has said that, along with, uh, you know, the front office, and said, we need to gain trust first. Let's get the fans on board. And, you know, the the Browns have two first-round draft picks. They can package those up and move up if there's a guy they really like or, you know, they have, I think, 10 draft picks in the first seven rounds. So they can package those up and move up if it comes down to it. But you're going to look at at a team that uh, obviously didn't think Trent Richardson was the guy. They believe that with different running backs, they can get the production that Trent Richardson had um, with, you know, he's only averaging three yards a carry, and, and that's carried over to Indianapolis so far. Yeah, well, I drafted him in my fantasy league. I thought he was going to do a little bit better. And and you know what? I th- I think as the Colts, uh, as he starts to learn that playbook a little bit more, I do think we're going to see more production out of Richardson. I haven't bailed on him. I, I, I don't necessarily think he's going to be a bust. But, I mean, hey, time will tell. Uh, you know, sports is a weird beast. Brian Hoyer's, you know, mayor of the town, essentially, and then he's done the next second with a knee injury. I mean, seriously, you talked about RG3 a second ago. Are quarterbacks not taught how to slide? I saw RG3 fumble away a ball trying to make some goofy slide, and then Hoyer, I mean, I mean, it was a bit of a freak accident, but he clearly wasn't sliding properly. Uh, l- l- let's talk about Hoyer for a second. What, what kind of spark did you see him bring to the team? Do you think that the front office thinks he might actually be the quarterback of the future? And talk about Whedon kind of stepping in uh, to fill those shoes, getting his starting role back, uh, albeit... Mm, hesitantly or because of injury rather I suppose uh, take it anywhere you want with the Browns quarterback situation well I think Brian Hoyer one thing you notice right off the bat is he he knows how to make quick decisions with the ball he doesn't stand in the pocket um, you know for hours on end and then you know that's the, that's Brandon Whedon's ultimate problem and why he gets sacked so much is he stands in the pocket uh, Brian Hoyer one thing he can do is he moves out of the pocket when he feels it collapsed he makes good decisions, good throws, and, uh, you know, he just, I think, grasped this offense. I mean, he was 
he was trained, and he mentioned this a few times. He was um, trained by Tom Brady, and he really grasped what Tom Brady was doing, took a lot of what he said into consideration when he came here, and uh, has really learned this offense well. Um, I think he could possibly be um, a quarterback for a while. I'm not sure, you know, it's the long future for him here, but I, I can tell you right now he is going to be a part of it. I mean, he he proved that uh, he can run this offense and be successful, and I think that's why Michael Lombardi uh, really wanted him here in Cleveland. He was very impressed with him, and uh, I think Brian Hoyer overall has a future here in Cleveland. Now for Brandon Wheaton, um, you know, a lot of fans booed him when he came in. Um, he struggled at first. He holds on to the ball too long, and, and just he doesn't get the reads yet. And and that's another thing with Brian Horry. He kind of understands defenses, where they're going to be blitzing at, and uh, try to get at, you know where the running back needs to be to make that key block. Where Brandon Whedon still is struggling trying to figure out defenses, and he stands in the pocket too long. I mean, he, he was sacked I think four or five times last night, and. Um, you know, he did finally get comfortable and started making good throws, and he does have a great arm. But, um, you know, that worked in college. But in the NFL, defenses are a little bit quicker, so they're catching up to him, and that's why he's had so many interceptions last year. But, uh, you know, Brandon Whedon had a, had, I mean, he really played well um, after the beginning of that game when he came in. And uh, I think, uh, you know, it's tough for this Browns team. After you see Hoyer go down, you think, the wheels are really going to come off. And Brandon Whedon held it together, led them to some nice drives. Willis McGahee got more carries, which I think helped Brandon Whedon also. And, uh, you know, the Browns were able to pull one off, and we'll see what uh, next week holds for them. But right now this uh, town is pretty happy with what the Browns have been doing here. One more quick point, though. When Brian Hoyer did go down, <clears throat> I remember – watching that play develop and it felt like 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 we were saying that that Whedon tends to sit in the pocket for too long that play where Hoyer finally got out of the pocket it seemed like he was standing back there for seven or eight seconds and then he started bobbing and weaving I knew it was a weird play to start I I didn't know it was going to end in an injury but it seemed very weird that he had that much time back there um, which is kind of ironic because Whedon's the guy that tends to take long and Hoyer's the one that goes real fast but uh, thoughts on Travis Benjamin real quick how much are we missing Josh Cribbs yeah, well, I don't think we're missing him too much. Uh, Travis Benjamin has just unbelievable quickness, and uh, he broke the record for most yards. I think he had 179 um, special teams yards, uh, beating Eric Medcalf, if everybody I'm sure remembers Eric Medcalf oh, and some yeah. of the nice runs he's had. But uh, Travis Benjamin, I mean, that, that guy's special. I mean, he's quick, knows what he's doing right away. You know, if, as soon as he hesitates, that's when he gets tackled easily, but um, he's going to be an impressive uh, impressive special teams player, especially on punts, because obviously on kickoffs he's not going to have a ton of chances um, there. But going back to Hoyer, he did have a lot of time. This offensive line has really protected for him well, but he, he does make the quick decisions. That time he did have a lot of time, and when he tried to run, um, I think he got caught there. And it looked like the Buffalo Bills defender uh, kind of launched into him and you know, was a little helmet-to-helmet contact. But Brian Hoyer does – I think all quarterbacks, like you said, they need to practice sliding in, in practice because a lot of times, you know, RG3, Michael Vick, you know, it's just not pretty. And those guys are runners where they're going to get hit. And, uh, you know, concussions are an issue now. And you got to practice sliding. That's an important part of the game now. Brian Hoare didn't have a graceful slide, still stood up, got hit. And uh, as everybody knows, he tore his ACL and is out the season now. Well, and the one thing I was thinking earlier, you know, I, I've torn an ACL. I, I made it through my football career without a huge injury. Um, but then playing a pickup game basketball in college, I yeah. tore my ACL. And I remember, you know, a, a day or two, whatever it was, sitting in the, in the hospital room. Um, I, I think my dad was messing with me. He put Teletubbies on and he hid the remote. So I had to <laughs> – and, and then he brings in a damn Teletubby for me afterward, like this little stuffed animal. I'm like, you're such a jerk. Give me the remote. Um, but, but, but I'm just thinking this. If Hoyer goes under the knife, I mean, he's going to be able to watch a lot of baseball and watch those slides. You're going to be watching playoff baseball sliding into second, sliding into home. You know, I, it's a hard way to drive the point home, but, hey, you know, uh, you got to grow from the opportunity. And, and it, you know, would the Browns take Adrian Peterson on next year's team? I think so. He came off an ACL. So, I mean, it's doable. 
Um, it, it's not yep. a third concussion where he's, I mean, scrambled eggs up there. So, I, you know, <laughs> I really, I really hope the best for him. I, I am praying for him. Hope that he, that he does well. We're, we're right about at that four thirty mark. Do you have another couple minutes to talk? Talk uh, some some Buckeyes yeah. or okay, well, yeah that's yeah that's no problem. Okay, let's do that then. Let, let me hit reset again. We're talking with Rob Troutman. Rob, explain to people what you're doing over on your site and, and how long you've been doing it and what they can find when they go check you out. I'll give you a chance to kind of promote your stuff for a second here. Well, well, we were on TV and we made the switch to podcasting probably a little over a year or two ago, and uh, you know it's four friends. We've been talking sports as long as we can remember. Um, and what we do is we get together, we have a, a few drinks sometimes, we hang out, um, go over, you know, the Cleveland national and local sports, try to promote them a little bit. Uh, we have fun. We get involved on Facebook and Twitter, um, at SOT podcast on Twitter and, and on Facebook is where, um, you know, we've been getting a good amount of listeners there. We post scores, news updates, try to get people involved on Facebook and that's four slash SOT podcast after facebook.com and you know we have a lot of fun we get out in the community kind of go to different locations sometimes and and uh promote uh sports on tap get out there get like we said we like to help charities um american blind golf is another charity we've uh, been involved with and we go on location for and just talking sports having fun getting people's thoughts whether it's cleveland sports or you know uh, national topics that have been uh hot topics but we have fun. We like to get out there and uh, get as many people involved as we can from all over. Very good. Well, make sure everybody swings over and checks that out. And, you know, next time next time you're looking for someone to talk some sports, feel free to reach out this way because we're kind of doing the same thing. We've been doing this for about two and a half years now at the New American Media. Uh, we do a show called Agree to Disagree, and it's it's politics and, and spirituality mm-hmm. and finance and everything you're not supposed to talk about inside of a bar, which is why we <laughs> love it. And it's called Agree to Disagree, whatever side of the spectrum. We just enjoy the good conversation. I guess maybe that's the bartender in me. I, I've enjoyed all the conversations at the bar. Um, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, I mean, just a chance to, to reconnect with, with, with friends. I mean, we, we've been fortunate enough to talk to cool people like, like John Tellich, you know, what is it, 11 times? Emmy Award winning. Uh, yeah, he's, he's classic, Fox great Eight guy, oh, and uh, just the best, you know. And it's yeah. it, 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 it's it's a great place to reconnect because, especially with us being out here on the left coast, uh, you know, being two thousand miles away, several different time zones, you know, it's kind of hard to stay connected with everybody. So this is a good opportunity for it. So you know, we'd we'd be more than happy to bring you back sometime, and and I'd be more than happy to jump on your program sometime. But let's do this. I want to talk That'd a little bit great. of Urban Meyer. Want to talk a little bit about the Buckeyes, the matchup coming up this week, and we'll be back on the other side. My name's Brian Engelman. You are listening to the Unhappy Hour here on the T N A M Radio Network. You are listening to the New American Media.